to Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. I love stocks. Today's date is July 14th, 2019. We've got a real good list today, and Miss Vegas, I'll hand it right over to you. Well, good morning, everyone, and hope you're enjoying the weekend. The weather is just phenomenal. Um, so I definitely have a little bit longer list, as you guys know. Sundays we do a, a longer list. Um, so please write them down, especially if you like, you know, the one as we go through the stocks, the ones that you like, write those ones down. So we're going to talk about Workhorse, WKHS, UXIN, Facebook, Ford, IGC, OHRP, FLKS, ACST, Boeing, and OMCL. And uh, let's get started. So we're going to talk about Workhorse Company. Well, you know what? You guys know that Workhorse, um, we've talked about it before. They're in also the consumer goods. They're in the auto parts business. They have um, the electric vehicles. Um, and by the way, they have more electric delivery vehicles on the road than any other company. Okay. So they have delivery vans. They have pickup trucks. Um, they have so many. They also have delivery drones, as you guys know. Um, so they have a lot of stuff going on. But let me tell you something why I really like the stock. Um, definitely had a very nice 52-week high. Um, it did go over these Bollinger Bands. And this stock has have a lot of strength. And so definitely, to me, this looks like it wants to expand and go higher. And um, this is definitely something to watch, even just for a day trade. Or it's a beautiful setup for a swing trade. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim to talk about Workhorse because, you know, we've been talking about this one for a little while. Uh, you know, this is one of those stocks that when it does show up on the scanners or it shows up on my own personal scan that I like. Um, I like Workhorse. It's done well for us in the past. I think last time we kind of talked about this was back on June the 9th. But here we are, July 14, and Workhorse is ready to work. So, Jim, let's hear about that chart. You're one heck of a workhorse yourself, especially yeah. for what you do to the room and helping the ladies in the option room. So what we have here is this is the year's chart. We do have a year high that we've been calling this very bullish ever since it was down here at three bu uh, $2, and she's had a very nice run. Right now we had a high of 362 last Friday with a beautiful week run every day was a candle that just bounced right over the base of the other candle as you can see what I'm pointing out here in this chart bam 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 and bam starting off with a pretty good Monday she did pull back to support level and that was right around the 270 273 area so I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart now and what I'm showing here is a chart of called a TTM squeeze chart with my three moving averages on it and that's the 200 EMA, the 34, and the 9 EMA. Last week it respected that 9 EMA all the way up and touched down three different times to that 34, which was a good buy entry or a good buy entry for, for getting in this trade if you weren't in it to begin with. And we've been calling this thing bullish for a very long time and it busted past my resistance or my resistance level a couple of weeks ago. And then every week's been a new resistance. So I'm going to call the support on this thing. I think it's no lower than 320. 320 is going to be your ideal entry for your third support. Your second one's going to be right here at 326. And your first one is here at 339. And we did form, if I look at the daily chart, one minute, we did form a pennant flag. We had a high of 361 and it pulled back. And you can see the lower high right here or the lower low and fell right into the pivot point which created a pennant flag so I like to see this thing break past 361 come come uh, tomorrow Monday excuse me <laughs> at 320 is going to be your low support this is workhorse W K H S and the next one is a China play called UXIN yeah so just one sec jumps on a workhorse so where do you see this actual target going because you know to me if it breaks you know what's well, closed around 349 so if it goes towards 375 we might even see four dollars on well, the I stock got a target. i think it's definitely in a new uptrend i got a resistance target to four dollars all right sounds great but we got to break we got to break that 361 it, it can with the week we had this week it can consolidate and pull back to that 320 and that's really okay, not that so, 
That's yeah. really not that much, but the resistance is four. Okay, so for those for of you coming. that are watching that stock, I mean, definitely you should set up an alert at 361. And then if it triggers or you get alerted, um, that's a good opportunity to potentially, you know, on your own accord, decide if you're going to actually trade the stock and take an entry at that point. So yeah. I'm going to set up an alert myself because I'm currently not trading this stock. Um, so I'm going to set up an alert for 361 with a sell target around four. And then I guess I'll go from there when the trade does trigger. Okay, it, that's wonderful. And if it pulls back Thank to 320, you. that's going to be a strong buy. Okay. And 320, low, low support. Okay. UXIN. All right, next one. UXIN. Uh, IT company. By the way, they're a China company. Um, they're into technology. They're in Beijing. And I got to tell you, like, the, you know, the website's hard to, I mean, if you go on their website, you know, you could see they're kind of like um, a car, you know, an online car, you know, car reseller, um, like Auto Trader in Toronto, and they have a, a whole bunch of cars.com. So if you actually go to the actual chart, and again, um, to me, you know, some people say, oh, this is a pump. Uh, this, this is, you know, not, not if you look at this chart the right way. Um, you know, this actual stock here, the UXIN, I actually uh, like it. And um, the reason I like it is to me, if you look at the chart, first of all, there was a nice volume surge on Friday and also had, you guys know, my favorite setup, pocket pivot. When I see a pocket pivot, I'm expecting a continuation on this stock. And on UXIN, if I was to actually, you know, chart that on my own um, and where I kind of like it to go, um, I mean, it's, if you think about it, it's actually got support at the 50 day. So you really just don't want this going below to 28. Um, but it, you know, resistance there um, was around 262 and we were able to break that. So I kind of, you know, looking for this to go now towards, I'm going to say 325 and 425. So I know it sounds like a big jump and it is, um, but that's kind of like what I'm looking at. And I don't really see tons and tons of resistance. But I'm going to let Jim talk about it because he will give you the actual, uh, what I like to call the granular chart details. So, Jim, let's hear what you think about UXIN. Yeah, Vegas and I called this trade back on 12.6 and it ran all the way up to 9.87. Since then, it's pulled back and we've had like a descending pattern and hit a bottom down here right around the 190 area, $2 area. Well, it's been in a bullish pattern for the last two weeks. We're going to pull up the 20-day chart. We're going to look at the 20-day chart. Friday, it had a very nice little breakout pre-market, and then it pulled back to the trend line, and the trend line landed here right around the 270 area. So this thing's going to pull back to 270 for sure. Anything below that's going to be a strong buy. I'm going to call low support right down here at 245 with a pivot point, your first support level right around the Two, or a second right around the 261 area with that first one being right there at 270. Now this thing can break out definitely. I think it's in the mood. We've had a pretty nice and it can pull back. So we're going to look here at the let me see if I can get a three month one up. Magnify this up a little bit. We got a resistance level here at 296. Then we can take it to 315 and 329 and then we got a resistance high up here right around 330 if she decides to break out of that 279 area so we've got 296 and we're going to just round it off up here to 315 to 329 with a resistance level of 330 and that's going to be UXIN with the pullback support no lower than 245 to yeah 235 to 245 somewhere in that area and that's going to be UXIN. The next one Miss Vegas called out in the room and this was just a beautiful play with little help from our friend from the trade exchange Miss Vegas. Oh yeah well not even a little help they're a huge help so I gotta tell you so if you guys go to um, you know Facebook I mean you guys know they had some announcement now if you go Jim to the um, you know, if you go to our website there and you were to put Facebook, you can see all the different, we have all the news feed coming through on the uh, trader tools on the stock portal. Um, you'll see all the news feeds that come through. 
But I want to say, here's what happened here. So on Friday, I mean, you know, Facebook, I have been saying I'm bullish on Facebook because I've talked about the Libra coin and the Libra, what's happening and all the investors involved in it. Um, so I do believe if you like longer term holds or like to invest longer term, um, definitely Facebook is a long hold. Um, and you just got to ride the channel and not be worried when it pulls back and just keep, you know, just keep going. Um, but anyhow, there was some commentary on Friday towards the end of the day, because we know that Facebook's had a lot of problems with the issues with the privacy information. And, uh, you know, they were being hounded, like, you know, that what they need to be penalized for what's going on and what happened. So we saw some news feed from Trade Exchange at 3.42 p.m. that there was a volume pop to highs following reports that they possibly reached a settlement um, with the Federal Trade Commission. And um, you know what? We still didn't know 100%. So right away, maybe like a few minutes, I said, you know what, guys? Let's get an option call on Facebook, but let's not get one that expires obviously now. Let's get one that expires next week. So right away, I alerted uh, the Facebook call for 210 strike. At the time, the stock was trading around, I think, 203, 204, if my memory serves me correctly. And those were 45 cents. So the room grabbed, a, you know, people grabbed whatever they wanted. Uh, some people grabbed the ones for 215 strike because those ones were obviously cheaper. And sometimes when you have a smaller account, you want to go up the strike level because you want to get an option call for, for cheaper. But you can also end up buying a few more uh, with a smaller account when the option calls cheaper. So we have some really good examples here. Um, and what ended up happening is that the Facebook call that I called from 45 cents went all the way to 221 in minutes, like literally minutes. And if you can see here, Jim can show you, uh, we have Ann Dolar. She's so excited, loves Facebook. Uh, she actually bought the ones for the 215. She bought five contracts and my goodness, she turned that into a profit of um, $435. You see, she Jim can show you the screenshot. She put 75 to 435. She was so excited. And then um, if you go to Josie, Josie bought the same calls, the 215s, and she also turned that into a profit of 516 on her end. So you know what? Just goes to show you that when I talk about small accounts, honestly, my opinion, a good way to grow a small account is options because the risk involved is so much different than putting in hundreds and thousands of dollars into a stock. Uh, and you need a stock to move to really make good profit. Or with Facebook, you know, even if you bought one contract for 45 bucks, you could have turned that into like $200 and still sell it the same day or, of course, could have hold it. So it just depends, you know, how you like to trade. But my goodness, that was a really big momentum play and just so excited for what potentially will be Monday. So, Jim, what are your thoughts on Facebook? And that other lady that, that's in the room, or do you want to talk about that later, that Facebook? No, I'll talk about, yeah, that one later, later. Okay. Oh, yeah, about Nikki? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so sorry, I mentioned Nikki. So, sorry, Nikki, I didn't mean to um, avoid her. So, I have uh, Nikki, who's new, and uh, her and I actually talked on the phone earlier this week. And, um, you know, we're just talking about her trades, and she's actually not traded options before in her life. She's actually always just traded stocks, so she's done day trades. And she's done swing trades. And uh, she actually found us, Jim, through uh, YouTube. Yep. So uh, welcome to Nikki. So anyways, her and I chatted on the phone. And uh, we're, you know, when I was talking to her about her account, um, <coughs> excuse me, I gave her the suggestion, you know, why don't you try options? And I explained how it works and how, you know, how it's the strategies with options. And uh, she said, okay, you know what? I'm going to try it this week. I'm going to, and I said to her, don't go big. Just buy one call, um, no more than two at a time, especially when they're cheap, um, just to try to get your feet wet and also have some confidence in what you're trading. Anyways, uh, as you can see, I touched base with her actually yesterday because we talked on the phone, but I haven't had a chance to actually talk to her again. So I figured, let me just message her. So I messaged her yesterday just to ask her, you know, how was your trading week? And please update me. So last time we touched base was Thursday. And then yesterday she responded and she said, Jim can show you right there. 
Um, I've had the best trading week ever. Uh, you guys are the best. Hard working. I appreciate you guys. I caught the Facebook call towards the end of the day. I'm still holding. It's looking really good at the moment. And she's probably just so excited because she's actually green and making money. And I can't, I'm loving the fact that she had her best trading week ever. So that's what excites me, what inspires us uh, to help people. And really, my heart really feels for people with small accounts. That's a very soft spot for me because I know sometimes what it's like. And I've been there. And, you know, you hear all these people making 10000 5000 And, okay, but that's, you know, they all had to start somewhere, some of those traders. So, you know, now it's a lot easier because they can go in heavier. So, obviously, when you go in heavier, you can have heavier profits, but also bigger losses, too. So, I really have a, you know, passion for helping women and helping people with small accounts. I love to help just everybody. Jim, what are your thoughts on the Facebook? Definitely love helping people out with small accounts and, le and te learning them how to trade. You know, a lot of people get lost. But uh, yeah. so here's here's the Facebook chart. We're going to pull up the year's chart. We're at a year high. Well, we're not at a year high yet. We had a 218 high back at the beginning, back, well, about the same time last year, back 725. And that was a 218 high. So we're going to probably top off and hit get up in that area. I've got a resistance level of two dollars and ten cents that we got to meet. We got a support. And I'm going to call the support level low support right at 196, about 197. On a, just by looking at a year's chart, for the last couple three weeks we followed that nine EMA up all the way up on a yearly chart, which is also very positive. And that pullback, probably your second support is going to be right at 200. So we've got that 197. 200 for a low and she had a great week last last week and really popped up on that news you know anytime you hear facebook make a settlement you usually see it pop up so let's pull up the 20 day real fast got a low 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 support down here i don't think we're not even going to get there so the third one's going to be here at 197 the second support at 200 and the first support's going to be right here at 20304. But I think we're setting up an ascending triangle right now after hours to break this 20547. And the next resistance for next week is going to be $2.10. Or, I mean, $2.10. $210. So we're going to hit that 21006. And I'm going to magnify this up just a little bit over here. Next resistance after that is going to be right around, and we're going to call a first resistance right around the 207.97. Your second resistance is going to be right here around the 20, I would say probably the 208.77 to 20927 with a resistance high to get to next week at 210.06. And that's going to be your resistance support chart for next week, and that's Facebook. So we don't want it to go. Let me go pull up the daily one minute. Just get maybe three support levels on it. We're going to start right here at the bottom of this triangle at 204.82. The next one's going to be right here at 203.79 and 203.40. And it can drop, it might drop, it may be at 202.36. You're willing to stop these chart, this video at any time and, and write these numbers down. The next one we're going to talk about, and very good call, Miss Vegas, on Facebook. You made a lot of people happy in the room on that. And we oh, my think. God. I got to tell you, that was, like, the best way to end a Friday because, like, the we had a really great day Friday. And it was, like, you know, 10 minutes left until the close and people were just getting ready to wrap up their day and getting ready for the weekend. And then all of a sudden we're hearing this news and I'm like, wait, don't leave. And then we alert, you know, shared the option call. And again, this is options. I did not say, you know, I did not alert the stock traders by the stock because the ones that are in the room uh, have Facebook as a long-term hold. So there, I don't know anybody that's really day trading Facebook in the channel um, just because it's just, so expensive you'd have to have a lot of shares to make that kind of money um and this is why i love options so much so yeah 
that was really awesome. And yeah. what a way to end the weekend. So that'd be fantastic to, to continue seeing some action, hopefully. And we want to give tomorrow. kudos. We want to give kudos to the stock exchange. The next one we're going to talk about. Trade exchange. Trade exchange. Trade exchange. Yeah. IG and season. And Jordan came. Well, we didn't talk about Ford. I thought we had Ford next, Jim. Okay, Ford. Ford? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to just, I just want to mention about Ford and, uh, you know, Ford. Uh, I noticed it was been popping on our scanner a lot. You know, this is an interesting stock to trade because it doesn't always move a lot. It's kind of a bit of a slow grinder, but I'm bringing it up because it is definitely showing some strength in the in the weekly. It's also got a very nice pocket pivot. I do want to mention they do report earnings July 24th um, on Ford. So, I mean, you could still swing trade this or even potentially day trade this. Um, you know, where I kind of see where this can go. I kind of see some resistance. Like, I mean, um, I would say 1085 and potentially go to 11. So that's kind of like my targets on this if you're going to consider trading it. But the first resistance would be the 1054. So, Jim, let's hear Ford. Yeah, so I'm going to pull And Jim up. loves Ford pickup trucks, too. Yeah, Jim has one. He's had it for 13 years, and about time for me to oh, get a new one. Oh, there you go. So let's pull this back to a yearly. We're at a yearly high breakout. Not a yearly high, but we're getting up to, the, to a double top breakout here at the 1050 area. So that's the resistance we got to break, the 1050. We've got a couple other little spots that we can go to, and I'm going to draw them up while we're looking at it right here. Um, we got the 1057, so I ain't going to count that. I'm going to count the 1068. And we've got 1079 with a high of right around the 1097 area, and I'm going to adjust that to 1094. So let's pull up the 20-day chart, see what it tells us. 20-day chart, I'm seeing what I call an arch breakout, pulled back to the third to the 9 EMA. We've got a low su first support right down here, and I'm going to adjust that support to 1042 to 1040 is going to be your first support. Your second one's going to be right around this channel area of 1026 to 1032, and your low support on this thing is going to be right around 1011. So if it does decide to pull back hard, I don't see it go any lower than that 1011, and it can get under down here to 1005. So Ford's Ford's a tricky little stock, like Miss Vegas says, but it did have a beautiful breakout Friday, and it seems to me like it held a channel most last two weeks between the um, $10 area, or at least the 1011, all the way up to the 1040. And that 1040, 1042 has been a resistance for me. And we did break out of that 1040, and we hit a 1050 high. And that candle is pretty strong right there. We did have a little pullback after hours to the 9, 2 cents. Big, big whoop de doo So let's pull up the three-month real fast and see if I can count the next resistances. I have to go to a year or six-month. Let's go to a year. I gave you the supports on it already. We're going to look at the resistance levels. We want to try to bring this thing up to the resistance level of 1090, 1094. And if we can get that 1094, that's going to be beautiful. But let's try to get this thing into break out of a new channel, if it can. And that's going to be from the 1050 area to the $11 area. And that's going to be Ford. And you have your three resistances, 1068, 1079, and 1094. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be IGC. Okay, so IGC is back on my radar on IGC, and this is the Indian Globalization Capital. You know, they say they're into the healthcare drugs, and um, you guys can check out uh, their website. You know what? Their website needs some work, but, uh, you know, they're into the cannabinoid, cannabinoid products and therapies, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the reason I have this one here on watch um is because in particular let me just see what i really liked about this uh stock um when i was looking at the weekly charts because i spent a lot of time going through weekly charts but this to me 
looks like it's just ready. It's not really, I would say, a day trade stock, um, but it did have like an outside day. And then I saw that the Bollinger Bands were getting wide. And that's what I liked about the weekly. Um, and it looks to me that it's ready for a swing trade move. So I'm going to leave it to Jim to talk about the chart. Um, but I'm going to say first resistance that I'm seeing and the, and the weekly chart, I mean, it's a very interesting chart. Um, it looks like the selling has kind of dried up. We had a huge volume surge back in June. And then it um, looks like the selling on the stock is done. And it looks like we'll probably start seeing some buyers coming in just from a swing trade perspective. But first resistance that I would see would be around 244. And then after that, 325. So um, there's a lot of room here to take a trade. Um, so I'd like to hear about the pullbacks and the resistances because I really like this for a swing trade potential. And I really like it better when it gets to 164, 165, because I really would like to see the support as well at the 200 day. But we do have support right now at 128.43 on the 50 day on IGC. So charts looking pretty good. Jim, let's hear your thoughts. Okay, Miss Vegas and I watched this last year and it ran all the way up to 1458 and pulled back to oh, a yeah. low on bad news kind of really hurt it real bad and then this latest run with the uh, Bitcoin it's kind of bounced back up it's titled capitalization so we're going to look at the year's chart right now I got a resistance level of 231 that we have to hit and break if we can break that we can go to newer highs but that's going to be a hard resistance we're going to pull up the 20 day chart now and look at it. I've got a low support right down here at 128. Your second support is going to be right here at 143 to 148. And then your first support is going to be right, we're right on it at 156. So the next resistances that you have are going to be on the 20 day chart. And they're going to be, we've got to break 163. If we can break that 163, 165 area. We're going to bring it up to 181, 205, and 231. That 231 is going to be a hard resistance if it does pass to pass it. Anything above, I would probably say 181 or above the $2 mark is going to be a gift. The resistance level is going to be between 231 and 245. And that's going to be IGC. You're willing to stop this chart at any time and write these supports down. And I'm going to add another low, low, low at 111. Uh, we're not going to see that. But anything I think below the 143 is going to be a strong buy. That's going to be your third support level, 143. And OHRP is next. Yeah, so you know what? I alerted OHRP on Friday. And uh, I saw that the stock did move earlier in the day and I you know didn't catch the move and I don't like to chase the stocks um but I will show here to Jim and he could show you um I did share in the room uh a swing trade because I saw that OHRP ran I think it had run to like 525 and then I saw it pull back and then I looked at the chart and I thought you know the stock has moved already and pulled back 35 cents let me actually look you know dig deeper into this chart and you know what I alerted a swing trade because I said this chart's ready to go. I said it's gonna it's gonna go again, um, and I saw that it was consolidating and it was looked like it was primed for a breakout. And so I did alert it as a swing trade because you can't sometimes there's a fake out, fake out breakout. But the weekly was beautiful, and you know what? Look what happened on Friday on OHRP Gem. Yep. Um, we Friday. lost you there, Miss Vegas. I said, look at the stock, how it ran beautifully on Friday. Yeah. And uh, it broke, you know, 550. So, I mean, people that didn't even want to swing it and hold it into Monday, they were able to trade it and as a day trade. Um, but you know what? What a setup. And I really still like this uh, stock. I like the setup on the chart. And, uh, you know, people are swing trading it. I'm actually still swing trading this stock. And I love it because it has a pocket pivot, beautiful volume surge, definitely had a breakout, and I'm looking for this to continue. So where am I looking to take this actual chart or stock? Well, you know what? When I look at this particular chart, 
Um, I got to say it's broken all my resistances. I mean, I was thinking it would go at around 550 and it broke that. Um, so I want to hear from Jem what he thinks because he is one of the best chartists I know. Jim, let's hear it. We do got a target to this on the yearly chart at 611. So if we can start breaking past these other resistances, which we did, and that would make it a double top on a yearly chart. We had an ascending triangle breakout on it Friday. As I'll point out right here, you can see we had we tried to reach the highs up right around the $5 area. And once we broke that $5 and that squeeze came into play, she went ahead and bounced on up and hit the day high of 575. So I've got different support levels on this. I need to look at the 20 day to really manifest this out. And I'm seeing a low support right down here around four and a quarter. I don't think it's going to get down that way. We might have a, a support level. This is really a nice breakout Friday. I mean, this was really from four dollars all the way up to five five seventy five on Friday. This really had a nice run. Um, I'm going to say that trend line, maybe where that candle resistance was at four ninety five, is going to be your first support. So we're going to set that there, 495 to be your third support. Your second one right here at 512 with your no lower, I say on your first support at 533. We need to break the 575 to bring it up to that new resistance level. And that resistance level on the yearly high was right around 611 to 628. And let's look at the three-year chart on this just to see if three years can give us any more yeah, I mean, you got a gap here to fill. And the next resistance, if this really decides to start to take off, 737. And then you've got a real strong pivot point right here at 1208. And now I'm giving some high numbers. Vegas is not used to me saying that. But with this last breakout that we had from the low down here right around 358. And I'm going to pull this up on a five-day chart. This is how good of a run it had five day five minute it ran all the way down here from 353 all the way up to 575 in one week we had a double top breakout right here at 509 once it hit that triangle and that's going to be your low support 509 533 with a breakout resistance of 564 and that's OHRP and what a great stock this was last week really was really was strong the next one we're going to talk about is FLKS, which was a beautiful call I made and Miss Vegas made. And with the help from the room, the Stock Authority and Rich and and a couple other people in the room, Abby, this thing really ran up well. Miss Vegas? Well, you know what? I got to talk about FLKS quickly because, you know what, that was actually brought uh, to my attention from Abby. And uh, we did mention this. And you know what? We had this one here for quite some time. Still holding it because, I mean, we, did, we even mentioned our video that time. Um, and, you know, it was mentioned over and over. I mean, we even had it mentioned again at 66 cents. Um, but, you know, going back to the original mention of this actual trade. And uh, we knew that there were going to be a merger vote for July the 12th is what we mentioned as well. And that people were going to be holding the stock because usually when there is going to be a merger vote, you can anticipate that the stock is going to go higher. And so I will say that when we did alert this, we alerted this back at 26 cents. And you know what? Thank you, Abby, for that. Um, but we've been following the reverse, uh, you know, this merger that's that's going on and uh, when you follow that kind of information uh, um you know that's good i mean and they're bringing in they're bringing in um you know we'll see what's going on here but it's definitely low flow people are saying it's diluted um but you know what merger vote is happening and if you ever want to check out what's going on you can go to our website put in the ticker at the stock portal and if you go to stock portal on our website and put FLKS, Jim can show you. We've added a new feature now. And if you scroll down, you can see the block trades, which shows you, you know, how many shares are being bought of the stock. But you can actually see the SEC filings right next door. So you can also go here at your fingertips. Everything's there. 
and you can see, you can read the filings. There was an 8K. Um, there was the 425 form, 425B3. So you can read anything you need regarding the stock and uh, also tells you what's going on with the volume and the liquidity. So, Jim, let's hear about FLKS because we want to know what do you think is going to happen here? Yeah, I started trading with Miss Vegas about three years ago, and here lately she's been really strong about the block trades that come in and the buying power of a stock. You saw this a lot with FLKS and other trades that we make and we do have a feature in our room that will show this plus we have it on our website all you gotta do is throw that ticker in there I did a little video on FLKS on the merger breakout we did have a ascending triangle breakout for the past couple of days on this stock here it we did take the run I've scalped this probably five or six times Friday and Thursday and then Friday it kind of pulled back a little bit and then she went ahead and broke out after hours when it got the merger news and it was final to 105 and that's going to be the resistance we got to break I still think this is a bullish stock but you know we, we never can tell until we wake up the next morning Monday and see how it runs I got a support level at 80 cents that's right where the trend line will, will lie it will follow down and probably hit that 80 cents and then the resistance we got to break is going to be the 9464 area at 95 and if we can break past that and get above a dollar we got 105 and I'm going to pull up a yearly chart I've got a couple more resistances on this I think that we can take this to and that let me pull this back and that's going to be a a yearly high of a resistance at 138 and that's going to be real strong it's going to be a fight and if it can break up to the 149 we're going to get new highs so we got the 80 the first resistances are going to be after we break the 95 or the 90 is going to be 105 138 and the support levels and I'm going to pull this up on a 20 day is going to be that 73 cents for a low 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 sell-off if it decides to knife you never can tell I've seen stocks where we get up and then all of a sudden people just take their profit and a whole room will just sell it off and it'll it'll, it'll dive so you gotta watch out for the shorts 80 cents is gonna be your your third support and the resistance to break is gonna be this 9464 to the newer highs of 105 and if it Bus past 105, we're going to 138, and that's FLKS. The merger news is complete, been voted on in a way. The next one we're going to talk about is ACST. Right on. So, Acasti Pharma. So, by the way, that's a Canadian company uh, in uh, Canada, so you can read all about them. Um, but they do, they're into cardiometabolic disorders, and that is their main focus they've been around since 2008 so it's not like they've been around uh you know like these other pharmaceutical companies um but this is what i like first of all just so you guys know too they will be presenting at the world congress center on heart disease and they're going to actually have a topic and what they're going to talk about um i think that oh that wasn't old information sorry i thought they were going to be talking about at one time they did talk about uh, heart disease and i think they're going to the conference again but i think they have the wrong date here um but anyhow sorry about that so um this actual stock i do like it as well for day trade and or swing trade and the reason i actually do like this one here is the fact that the bollinger bands were nice and wide and i'm looking for the stock to have a bit of an expansion the weekly stock is um the weekly charts looking really strong on this actual stock and in terms of like, where would I actually take this, me personally? I'm not in it at the moment, but I'm gonna definitely look at it on Monday. Uh, definitely has room to go to about at least 159. Um, and then I'd like to see if it does break, maybe go to 170. So Jim, let's hear about this um, Acasti Pharma. Beautiful new uptrend. Yeah, Thursday had a pullback after a great run from 89 cents all the way to 152. I'm probably not as bullish as she is on it but I am still bullish on the trade because it did pull back in the last three days of last week we did have an after hour low at 138 I'm gonna call low support right here about 129 
I think that 129 is going to be a hard, going to be my third support area. That 129, that was a previous we high we had back 20 days ago, or back in this 20-day chart. We're going to pull up the yearly chart and look at it real fast. We've had a beautiful run on this trade. I mean, just a beautiful run all the way from a low of 77, 78 cents with a yearly low of 43. And every time it starts to get up to this resistance level that we're at right now, it pulls back. And we had a real hard pullback on it the last time it reached up here. It did have a 180 high, so that's going to be our high resistance at 180 to 190. I think this thing can pull back a little bit to that one. 29 area that's going to be a solid support 129 and the, the resistance probably the pivot point in that the second support is going to be the 133 135 with a resistance to break right at 150 149 and if we can bust past that 150 and 149 this coming week we're going to go up to new highs and we got to break the 153 to bring it up to 180 and that's going to be a double top on a yearly chart. But this is kind of, you know, it reached a resistance and it pulls back. We, so we, we've got to see where it wants to go. If it wants to break past this 149, 150, we're going to go up to the new highs. If it decides not to do that, we're going to pull back to support right at 129. And I'm going to pull up the daily. And I'm going to pull up the 20 day and get a real good look at it. Yeah, 129 is your low, low, low support. Second support level area, 134 to 136. Resistance to break is going to be that 149 to 152. If we can break that 152, we're going to go up to 180, and that'll be a yearly double top. And that's ACST. The next one we're going to be looking at is a very beautiful trade. I mean, we called it out perfect. Miss Vegas complimented me a lot on resistance level you know I started at the end of the day started getting a little squeezy and wanted to take profit on it she wanted to stick with it and I'm glad she did and that's BA oh yeah BA for Boeing and uh, that was beautiful trade so I'm just going to show you guys like Jim and on your discord there um we did call like I mean I've been following B I mean I follow this chart non-stop like it's on my watch list constantly and you know on Thursday I did call out an option idea and I did say it was a bit of a lotto because BA sometimes is tough to trade. It sometimes it goes with the spy and uh, sometimes it just does its own. It doesn't care what you think. It just does what it wants to do and it can go up and down and it's, you know, it's a very tough trade to make sometimes. Um, so I did alert Thursday, the 362.50 calls. Those were 32 cents. And uh, we also had, uh, and that was for the smaller accounts. But I do want to mention we had the 360 calls. And those were for, you know, I called it on Thursday. And that was for the uh, people with maybe a larger account. Those are a little bit more expensive. They were double the price. They were 64 cents. So which is $64. So we did, and I did give it as a swing idea into the next day. And I said it expires tomorrow. So we bought them on Thursday because I really was very bullish on Boeing's chart. And you know what? What a move that made. I mean, that actual stock was just ripping. And I got to say, huge thanks to Jim, because he really charted this really succinctly that um, nobody could have charted it the way he did. And if they are out there, I'd love to hear about that. Um, but you know what? Jim charted this and the Boeing calls were actually uh, incredible. Now, one of the reasons the stocks are turning bullish also was because um, they mentioned, Trump had mentioned that Qatar was signing a transaction to purchase Boeing planes. Um, and I think we did the math and there was like, you know, billions and billions of dollars involved here. So, you know, we start to see this the uh, chart turning around. But the bottom line is this, the team with small accounts, the team here made a lot of good money. And, you know, at what I'm trying to show you here, it's the actual investment involved. So depending on the level of, this, of the price target, the strike price that you're picking will also depend on the price 
of the option call. But if you look, even on Friday, I called one at 365 strike, 18 cents. That's an $18 investment. And guess what? That went up 100% plus. So thank you to Jim. And just goes to show small accounts can't grow. Jim, let's hear about BA because I want to hear what's coming up. Oh, this was a, you know, this has had very bad news for a long time and has brought this stock down. Analysts got a target on this for $390. I'm going to pull up what I saw Thursday and I got in the option trade off Miss Vegas's call and I ran it up 100% and got out. It did create a sending triangle pattern and I'm going to show you that right here what an ascending triangle pattern is and I'm going to draw it up for you real fast and this is what I've learned a lot here in the past year or two I've really studied chart patterns and it's really made a big difference in my trading but when you get a, a flat top here at the at this level right here at 359.26 and then you've got what you would call I'm going to state it right about here now watch how this does see once it's squeezed up and I could have run that all the way up to here once it's squeezed there at the end of the day Thursday after hours it popped up and broke that channel so this was definitely bullish it also ran above my 9 EMA on Thursday which was very positive and you see the little sell off that came in on the TTM and it pulled back twice from that area I could have drawn this line just to here to here and every time it's pulled back and it hit that hit that bottom trend line so this is what you call an ascending triangle breakout and that's something that you want to learn when you're when you're learning stocks so let's pull up let's magnify this up back up to the five day again we ran up and it, it still respected that nine EMA all the way into the next day we had another breakout off the trend line here and I'm going to pull this up on a daily now and how I found the resistance at 365.17 I found it on a yearly chart and as I'm in the room I'm illustrating and teaching people how to hit these different resistance levels so we got a lot more targets we can get to we they say they got a 390 on this I can see that 390 and raise it up a couple of dollars for a long resistance let me pull this and this is on Boeing right about there at 392 I'm looking at the bases of the candles and that's where I write these up at. The next resistance is going to be right here, right around. And if I have to magnify it up to get a better look at it, that's how I do it right there. And then we got another resistance right here at 1836.40. And another one right here around 381.03. So we're going to pull this now back to the 20 day. You can see the resistance levels we got to get to. We did hit a 365.17 target that I called out last Friday. To me, this chart's still very bullish. We can run up to 368 Monday, a little bit lower maybe, right down here at the 367.74. And then we, if we can break these this little channel from the 367.74 to 368.57. We can carry it up into this other little channel that we had right here from the 368.57 all the way to the 378.24. So that's what our targets are going to be for next week. If it decides to pull back, it'll pull back to this ascending triangle right here at 359.18 to 360, somewhere in that area. If it decides to pull back to a low support. I've got my first, probably second support right here at 362.38. That's going to be my second support. And the resistance we got to break is going to be that 365.17. If we can break that, and we did, right there into close, I'll pull up the daily chart. We hit 365.45. So let's adjust this resistance level to 365.45. And that's the one we got to break to get to those other resistance levels. So let me run this by you one more time. We've got a low, low support right down here, about where this channel began. And that's going to be right at 363. That's going to be your third support. Your second one's going to be right in this area of right around 363.52. The resistance to break is going to be the 365.45. 
and we're going to go to the 20 day. If we can get past that 365.45, your next resistance levels will be 367.74 to 368.57 with a long term high, which I think we, I do believe we will hit again, will be a triple top on a 20 day at 378.24. And that's BA, and I'm very bullish on this trade right now. The next, okay. and, next and last one we're going to talk about is going to be OMCL, and I bet you Miss Vegas will have a lot more to say after that. Yeah, well, you know what? I just want to say, like again, um, you know, I'm not into shorting stocks. I'm, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a shorter, but um, I do want to say, like, trade exchange. I just love them so much. But you know, here's what's here's how the how my how I think. So, you know, Trade Exchange and Jim can show you. I have a screenshot there. Um, they gave some news around 10.01 um, on July 11, and they did mention that there was some volume weakness uh, in the actual stock because there was a report out by Blog Gladhouse Research, and they basically published a 35-page report on the inept Omnicell Inc. And um, obviously, that's the company. And based on the research, they said that the target of the stock was going to be 3550, which is down like we're talking 59% downside. So that was basically the news. I mean, Trade Exchange, you know, provides a new service and uh, I love them. And you know what? So they, they, you know, I saw the news, heard the news, and I thought, hmm, let me see. Let me look at some puts. So again, I don't short stocks um, because I don't want to be stuck in a position where I have to cover. Um, so it's just not my comfort zone. But I did say, okay, you know what? Let's look at this from an options angle. And you know what? I did, I did, if you, if Jim can show you the option, the screen below, Jim, where I show the alert. Yes, ma'am. Um, I did have a, a, a put idea. And the put idea was to buy a put. It was 40 cents, which is $40 for the $75 strike. By the way, expires July 19. So this is not even expired. Now I did say, on this one in particular, that this was a lotto play. And the reason I said it also was because the volume was very low on the options side in terms of puts being bought. And there was only like five of them being bought at the time. And I thought, hmm, if there's not a lot of interest on shorting this, uh, you know, you could be putting in $40 and it could be like a wash. I mean, you could lose half that money, you could lose it all. So that's why I was very cautious to say lotto play uh, because you have to be prepared to lose that $40. But let me tell you what this did. You know what? This lotto play was definitely a lottery winner because this $40 investment actually went as high as $855. Now, I can't take the time to screenshot every little thing that happens during the day, but I did show you the screenshot right above that it does show that the high that day on Friday, this $0.40, cent, $40 investment went as high on Friday at 737 So if you had a $40 trade on this particular option put, you could have sold it to, you know, even a few hundred dollars. Again, you don't have to sell it at the rip at the high because these options, you know, they fluctuate so fast. But what another great trade so all you need sometimes is just one great option play with a small account and you can actually grow your account very nicely and um it took a you know about a day for the move to finally happen because we we bought this on thursday and the move finally did happen on friday um so that was a beautiful trade and just loving the fact that um this turned out really good for many people so that's great. Congratulations to them. And uh, that's about it for me. I just want to mention one last thing before we wrap up. Um, it is going to be earnings season again. So you need to understand there's going to be sometimes a lot of people selling the large cap stocks. In some cases, some people do not hold their trades into earnings. Some people do. It just really does depend how they like to you know, manage their own account. Um, but we do have earnings season starting, and uh, that actually starts uh, tomorrow, but it gets pretty heavy. So tomorrow pre-market, we have City, and uh, we have Shift Pixie, and uh, Organ uh, Organigram. 
And then we have really heavy, 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 heavy earnings the rest of the week. I mean, we have Johnson and Johnson. We have Goldman Sachs. We have Domino's Pizza. Uh, you know, we have uh, eBay this week. We got Netflix this week. We've got um, Ali, we got Chewy, the new IPO is coming, we got Microsoft, you got American Express. I mean, a lot of big earnings happening this week. So it's going to be extremely busy. So, Jim, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I think we got one more big red candle to come in on MCL. Yeah. Uh, we did have a pivot point area on the yearly chart at 71.92, and we busted down below it. So maybe we can get this thing to pull back to a low low of around sixty dollars, another eight dollar dip. That's what I'm looking Ooh, at. Nice. And the yearly well, low low, nearly bottoms at around fifty six ninety one. Well, you know what? Maybe um, I may even look at um, some option, another put tomorrow. We'll see how and I'll the see market how, reaction. How that? How that's going? Mm -hmm. Sorry. We we'll have to see how it reacts Monday. If it starts, like you said, go down more, yeah, we're going to go lower. Yes, yeah, so I'll see tomorrow again. Uh, I'll see how this opens up in the market, but I may actually call a new put idea um, for this coming week on this particular stock. So if you like options as much as I do, I mean, I love options, um, definitely be watching this one potentially for another put play. Uh, because it doesn't seem that it's going to recover anytime soon just yet. No. It doesn't look like it's ready to reverse anytime. So uh, we might have some room here to uh, take it down a little more. So that's great. Thanks a lot, Jim. Yep. So this is the, all right. This is going to be it. Please uh, subscribe and ring that bell for future updates on YouTube. Also, we have a Twitter page right here. We really appreciate it if. We also have a free trial, a one-week free trial, if you want to join the room where Vegas and I are on voice, and I'm talking about strategies and chart patterns and stocks, and she's making great calls in the option room, and I'm playing scalping and swinging and learning options myself. But I've learned a lot from Miss Vegas, and I know a lot of beginner traders have also. So please subscribe to our – we have a little link there on, on the on the channel on our website where you can hit that Twitter page and you can follow us there and she'll give alerts there. We also have links to other places like Stock Twits, Pinner Guys, Facebook or YouTube. And if you need to write us a letter, we even have a little spot up there for that. So I really do appreciate Miss Vegas. She's really helped me a lot in my trading and I think I've helped her out just a little bit. But uh, we, we are a good team together and we do have a great room. This is July 14th, 2019, and don't ever forget, Miss Vegas is the boss, and I really do appreciate her. And <laughs> we both love stocks, and that's it. Have a great week, and wish you a lot of luck.